Good morning, Four Oaks Church. It's Friday, April 21st. My apologies for not being able to go live yesterday. That was Thursday, April 20th. Uh, circumstances beyond my control. So anyway, but we are back here to hopefully finish strong for the week. We are, of course, in the Sermon on the Mount. And what Jesus has um, begun to do for us is to unpack and apply the law in the life of the believer. So remember Jesus's warning um, for us in Matthew 5, 20, for he says, for I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And what Jesus means there in terms of righteousness is not perfection, it's wholeheartedness, it's constancy. There is a sense in which there is a consistency between the inward and the outward. And the righteousness of the Pharisees went only skin deep, literally. Um, they were going through the motions of observing the law, but inwardly their hearts were corrupt. They weren't motivated by the right things. They wanted the applause of men and the accolades of the people and comfort and affluence and all those status and all those sorts of things. And Jesus says, unless your righteousness exceeds that, you cannot enter the kingdom. And that's a literal statement. It's not hyperbole. Jesus is not saying that we're saved by our righteousness. He's saying that the only, only thing that counts in the eyes of God is a righteousness that flows out of a transformed heart. And of course, a transformed heart only comes by the grace of God given through the death and resurrection of the Son of Jesus Christ for us. But Jesus wants to take that little verse, that principle about righteousness, and show in six areas what righteousness looks like in the life of the citizens of the king. Um, the, the citizens of the kingdom who have aligned themselves under the lordship of Jesus Christ what will they value? What will they prioritize? And he tackles six areas, Jesus does. He, he, he begins by teaching on anger, then lust, oath-taking, uh, divorce, um, loving one's neighbor, retaliating against one's enemies. And these six areas are, are sort of grouped into uh, to three pairs, okay? And we've been looking at the first pair which fall under the rubric of the sixth and seventh commandments, okay? And so we've been looking at, first of all, verses 21 through 26, um, about anger, about you shall not murder, which is, of course, the sixth commandment. And we've been looking at the seventh commandment, verse 27, you shall not commit adultery. And Jesus' great burden here is to show us that it's not just the outward actions that count, it's the attitude, it's the heart, it's the inward and the outward. It's the um, it's the 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 righteousness that flows from a heart set apart to to God, and He's wanting to show us what the real application of those commandments um, are. Remember, the Pharisees wanted to simply say, "I haven't killed anybody. I haven't been unfaithful to my wife physically, so I can check off that box. And Jesus wants to say that's a misinterpretation of the Ten Commandments. It goes much deeper than that. This goes to your very attitudes. This goes to your heart, because out of the heart flows action. Out of the heart flows behavior. Someone doesn't just wake up one day and say, today's the day I'm going to murder someone, right? That is cultivated and built up over time of, out of a heart of rage and anger and bitterness. The same thing with adultery. I, I don't think anybody just wakes up going from a, a, a blissful marriage to, to, to a matter of seconds saying, today's the day I'm going to commit adultery. Again, these sins, these outward expressions find their root in the heart. And that's what Jesus is wanting to put his finger on here. So we're going to say one last thing about the seventh commandment. Uh, we're going to read verses 27 through 30, and then we'll be ready to, to, to preach through uh, both of these passages this Sunday. But let me read Matthew 5, 27. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. 
For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. Now, remember what we said before, when Jesus uses this pattern of you've heard that it was said, but I say to you, he's not correcting the Old Testament. He's not abolishing it. He's not setting it aside. He's either correcting a misinterpretation that the Pharisees were, um, were, have la had latched onto to, to sort of do workarounds the, uh, for the commandments, or he's showing us the deepest heart of the commandment. And that's certainly what he is doing here. I want to focus on, for these last few minutes that we have together this week, what Jesus's strategy is for combating lust or um, governing the, the eyes of the heart, so to speak. And it's some of the most controversial voices or verses in all of scripture. Some have taken them quite literally. Um, we understand them meta metaphorically, but ho hopefully maybe let's be reminded of, of some things here. Jesus says in verse 29 and 30, if your right eye causes it to sin, tear it out and throw it away. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better to, to lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. Now, again, except for a few um, aesthetics and others who've taken these things quite literally over the history of the church, most scholars and people have understood these to be uh, metaphorical, of course. Well, Jesus is just saying, um, you know, you, you need to do what you do need to do to fight um, off sin. Um, and of course, that's, that's certainly true. But the imagery that Jesus uses here is actually very violent. It's very bloody. And it denotes one of great struggle. I, I, I remember hearing the story um, one time of a hiker who got lost on a trail um, and had his um, leg or arm or something pinned in a rock and he was way out in the wilderness and no one was there to rescue him. And he waited day after day after day after day until he was almost, uh, he was on the brink of starvation, about ready to die. And all he had on his possession was a small knife. And what he did with that knife was use it to cut off his limb to free himself from the rock. Now, as horrifying as that sounds, um, obviously dr drastic, um, dire situations call for dire solutions, right? And what we have here is Jesus saying, look, um, just like that man on the trail, if he doesn't cut off his arm, he's not getting out of there alive. In the same way, Jesus wants us to have the same urgency and to view with the same seriousness our own sin, our own things that, that lead us to a path of establishing bad habits and bad patterns that ultimately result in um, outward action. Now, again, Jesus is not saying here, um, if you commit adultery once, you're going to hell. That, that's, that's not the point. The point is, though, that unrepented of sin, right? Sin that, that we refuse to seek the grace and mercy of God about is not forgiven sin. Um, there is a sense in which the, the true disciples of Christ are those who recognize their sin, confess their sin, repent of their sin. That's an evidence of their salvation. And so Jesus is saying, we need to understand the seriousness of sin. We need to understand its um, all-encompassing nature, um, how it wants to seek um, to, to devour us, and, and, and to, uh, again, act appropriately. And so often, what can keep us from repentance, what can keep us from taking violent action against our it happens not by playing around and uh, flirting around with sin. All right, so that's our word for the week. Um, thanks for being here this week. We'll be back here on Monday morning. I think that's the 24th. 
and we're going to look at the next two um, ethical areas, divorce and oath keeping. And as you can imagine, um, those will be some interesting discussions, but let me pray for us. Lord, it's not our righteousness that gets us into heaven, but Lord, it is not only your righteousness given to us, but it's also the, the work of, of grace that you do in our hearts that enables us to draw near to you. Uh, because you've saved us by your grace, Lord, we can now live lives of wholeness, constancy before you. So Lord, deliver us from, from the evil one, deliver us from sin, uh, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, Lord, we, we trust in him, look to him. It's in his name that we pray.